Long Island shorelines are changing. When I bought this house 13 years ago, there was an actual beach here, and my neighbors and I could come and bring our beach chairs. And they're changing fast. We no longer have a beach. So what are the solutions for our region that loves the water despite its threats? Many along Long Island's coast are looking for long-term answers as rising tides and powerful storms eat away the shoreline. State and federal projections show a dramatically different look to Long Island by 2050 and by the end of the century, with thousands of homes and buildings lost to the shrinking landscape. That's going to happen faster and faster, and we're going to see more and more dramatic changes. We're in trouble. The state statistic is that from the year 2010 to the year 2020, we've had 31 severe weather events which have cost the taxpayers just in the state of New York a hundred billion dollars. We're not saying climate change is coming, we're saying climate change is here. I would say at the turn of the century with the science that we have in front of us, they're predicting anywhere between four to six feet of sea level rise. The shoreline base is shrinking and the roads are starting to flood a lot more frequently. And they're flooding from rain, but more importantly, they're flooding from the seawater coming up through the storm drains or overland. We want to make sure that you know, especially in an area like Fire Island that's cut off from the mainland, that you have a in, in, uh, power supply that's uninterrupted. When storms occur, you know, power lines are brought down, and, and once you lose power, um, that can affect our ability to operate our wells. For those who live near shorelines, you could see more energy with storms, more flooding, more full moon high tides. There's predictions that the Montauk Point will be severed from Long Island. There's predictions that the whole South Shore from Freeport to Hampton Bays is going to look completely different, including Fire Island National Seashore. Fire Island, a barrier island, will be greatly endangered as sea levels rise and storms become stronger and more frequent. So without Fire Island, there's no protection to what would be the South Shore of Long Island. Coastal areas aren't the only ones threatened. In the center of the island, intense storms are flooding homes and businesses as aging and inadequate infrastructure struggles to keep up with the downpours. So what are the current solutions the region has? The first, fight back. We're doing quite a bit to harden the shore, to make for more better drainage, for more sustainable design, to protect the residents, protect the homes, and protect the neighborhoods. It's not just local municipalities fighting back. The Army Corps of Engineers has been building defenses on Long Island for 50 years. Yeah, the total cost of the projects that the Corps has constructed along the Long Island coast uh, over the last 50 plus years is easily up into the hundreds of millions of dollars. In Long Beach, the Corps recently finished a $130 million rebuilding of the damaged shorelines, adding nearly 300,000 tons of rocks and more than 4 million cubic yards of sand. The Army Corps' most ambitious ongoing effort against flood risk is the $1.8 billion Fire Island to Montauk Point project with New York State. That includes hard barriers, home elevation, and restoration of sand in beaches along an 83-mile stretch of Suffolk County coastline. We're seeing a lot of hard defenses being implemented, bringing in FEMA and the Army Corps to rebuild things, build flood walls, things that are essentially short-term solutions to this problem. And unfortunately, they often give people a real false sense of security. This is our only food store. There are times in the winter, even with no name storms, big nor'easters, that this does get flooded. Um, so we do need to address this infrastructure issue as these storms become more and more common. The second solution is flight, commonly referred to as managed retreat. Something like managed retreat is a more permanent reduction of risk for people because you're getting out of those vulnerable areas. Massac Beach is an area, as you see, right on the waterfront, and it's had numerous buyouts already happen. And so 
The community is already in the process of thinking through and figuring out how to retreat. A big storm comes in, houses get flattened, some people rebuild, some people raise their house, some people move out. We call it managed retreat because it's meant to be contrasted to what's sort of what's happening now, which is a much more unmanaged situation. Governor Hochul this year proposed a $250 million boost in her state budget for buyouts. Yeah, I know the land here is very valuable along the shorelines. I get that. It's a balancing act here. Right now, we don't have a policy that says you cannot build back if your home has been washed away. But as part of our buyback program, we think it makes sense for us to have those conversations before the next storm comes. Do you see how there's the bulkhead ends right there? Uh huh. Yep. And then it's just all erosion, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe that if you don't have a bulkhead here, you're taking a major risk. For those who stay in high-risk areas, the rising cost of insurance is not going unnoticed. Regarding rising sea levels, flood insurance is, the rate is going to be directly related to the risk of flooding. They are beginning to factor the flood risk into what they're willing to pay for a home that might end up depressing um, home prices in some areas. On the North Shore right now, Walls and other bulkheads are being built to keep the rising tide from destroying properties and homes overlooking the sound. And on the South Shore, from Montauk to Oyster Bay, from Long Beach to Mastic Beach, rising sea levels are being fought on all fronts through sand additions, raising roads, and reconstructing drainage. And so we're better off than we were before Superstorm Sandy because at least we're starting to talk about this problem. But over the next 75 or 100 years, the shape of Long Island is literally going to change tremendously. And we have a lot of work to do between now and then to make a plan for how we're all going to continue to thrive on this island when it's a lot wetter and a lot smaller. Long Island is literally on the front lines of climate change impacts. We're an island of three million people who stick out into the ocean. And for younger Long Islanders, the thought of inaction is a real concern. Long Island is such a beautiful place. I feel like when you really see the direct impact, it's kind of heartbreaking yeah. to see like, you know, this, this could be gone in a couple years. Long Island, let's talk about your flooding experiences and what needs to be done. Go to newsday.com next LI to join the conversation.